All right, well, today we're gonna to be doing the first upgrade on our new bus RV toter situation here. If you didn't see the last episode where we bought this thing, this is basically a transit bus converted into an RV in the front with a garage in the back. So it's a self-contained unit, it's all in one. We can fit the car, the tires, the tools, everything we need, and we can sleep in it and stay in it at the track. I have dreamed of a setup like this. I've always wanted something like this. And even more than that, I've always been into big rigs, semis. I used to play the truck simulator game when I was a kid. So I've always wanted to have something like this. And this thing popped up and we couldn't pass it up. So that being said, today we are gonna start with the upgrades. We've got a lot of uh, stuff planned for this thing just to kind of A, make it our own, B, better set it up for what we're doing, C, you know, fix any weird little issues. The previous owner did do a lot of work to this thing. He has probably about $40,000 in receipts of work he had done to it while he had it. He used it a lot. Um, so hopefully mechanically we're good. I'm sure we'll run into some gremlins, but hopefully we can focus on the, the bedazzling side of things, as Josue calls it. But first things first, before we get into any of that, we need to mock load this thing up. We need to open it back up, drop the lift gate, load the car in there, make sure the car fits comfortably, and kind of load everything else in and make sure that we can fit everything we need to fit. We don't want to find out two days before we need to leave for an event that we can't fit something and we need to figure out another plan. So that being said, first things first, we're gonna put the car in it, which this is a big moment for me. It'll be the first time we hopefully get the car in this thing. Should be exciting. So I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering and get to it. Feels like second nature now. All right, let's see if you can do it. Oh, I got this. <laughs> I'll probably forget one thing. It's, it's a whole procedure for sure. We need to write it down just in case, you know, standard operating procedure. Oh, we need to go start the generator. We that's, need power. That's definitely crucial. Got a little overzealous. <laughs> Up in the bus we go. I know, it's toasty. <laughs> I need to wire up uh, shore power to the bus. That way we can do all this by just having it plugged in, but for now we gotta use the generator. Day one of owning it. Two? Day two, I think. Yeah, make sure you're out. <laughs> Once the safety chain's off, no walking under it. Extendo mod. Hmm. I mean, be able to get anything on
door is like the way they're held. Oh, that's with the, the things locked, so they can go further with this. Do you have bungee? So as we started to lift the car up more, we realized that we were a little bit offset by a few inches to the driver's side and that that was not going to work. This is a tight fit. We knew it was going to be a tight fit. I did measure it before we bought the bus because I, I knew the vet is wide. It is the widest car I've ever dealt with. It barely fit in my old trailer. I mean, it rubbed both the fenders on the way in so bad it tore the fenders apart. So, so we knew it was going to be tight, but we knew in theory it should fit based on our measurements. It's just it's looking like we've got to be pretty perfect with centering the car now in the future we can put some marks here and some stuff just to make sure but this first time is going to take a, a a little finagling So once we got the car on the ramp centered and up, it was time to winch it in. This is really the moment of truth, but basically our narrowest point is the door. It's basically from where the door starts all the way to where the door seals, the door frame. So the fact that we got it up in between the doors means it should go the rest of the way in. We're just gonna have to you know, keep an eye on it and make sure it goes in nice and straight. Now, the tricky part is we've never done this before. So as I said, we're learning. We're gonna learn every time. We're gonna get quicker and quicker with it. The first time's always challenging. But I wasn't really sure the best approach. Do I ride the car in? Do I try to walk next to it? Is it going to be wide enough for me to get out of it? These are all things we won't know until we get through this first time. But we made it through the door frame. We got the car in the bus. So now that the car is in there, it's time to close everything back up. This is one of those things. Still, we're going to learn. We're going to get quicker with it. So we went ahead and got the ramp pushed in. It's a little bit tricky to get it all the way in. But as we were rotating it up, we noticed the winch was starting to get caught. It was binding up and it was getting caught in the rollers. So luckily, it was low enough to where we could just lift the lift gate and take the slack out. But we're going to have to fix that. All right, we had a little technical difficulties there. The winch line just got caught in between the two rollers um, so we pulled it out we tightened up the rollers uh, so now hopefully we're good oh my drink I can reach that maybe Ugh. I gotta say uh, yeah magnetic koozies you can leave them way too high up on the side of your trailer if you have a thing like this garagebuildco.com check them out uh, all right yeah so Hopefully we're good now. We kind of rewound it. Just something we'll have to keep an eye on in the future. Let's try to lift her up. This is the final step. So with our winch problem seemingly fixed, it's time to actually close this thing up. This is the big moment of truth. I mean, the doors are closed. We know it fits, but this is going to be the moment where we get to see the vet inside of a bus that is all closed up and sealed. So I made sure that the winch wasn't binding the whole way up. I checked it a little bit, and then it was time to close the doors, batten down the hatches, and lock this thing down. Ship her on out. All right, now let's uh, go see what it looks like from the inside. But there is officially a car in there. Oh, we're kind of eating. Uh... Where did uh, the winch controller go for this one? I mean, really getting next to it isn't much worse than the other trailer. Keep going. There we go. This is so good. But yeah, we'll just leave it there, just slack. Yeah, there's actually got more room in here than I thought. We got room behind, room inside. So let's all take an AC break. Ah, oh, it's nice. Party bus. We're trying to make the TV work. 
We've got it working, playing Fast and the Furious on DVD, but we cannot figure out how to get the picture. I mean, we plan to put a smart TV in here anyway, but if we can make this work for now, that'd be great. Probably gonna try to do the slide out too. Yeah, take that. It's surprisingly very easy. Like, I thought it was going to be real heavy. No. Right. Take it and put it, maybe just set it back there and we'll pull this bed out. Dude, it's crazy how much more room there is in here now. All right, uh, I think you pull these. I don't remember. Pull these off, maybe? So let's do that. And then I want to say it's like, yeah. Yeah, and then that flips back. That's it. You know, so I got a little nook, put a sheet on it. There it says it. I was trying to figure out where it said it. This thing is hell of a Oh, this is nice. Boom. Oh, this is great, dude. This is sick. Lounging. We got the car in the back, we got the bed, we got the TV not working, but <laughs> hey. Oh, it's gonna be tried out, try it out. I'm dirty too, so I'll we'll have to clean it. Pretty nice, right? It's comfy. Right. Look at this. Oh, it gets a little tight there with the armrest. You gotta. There we go. Boom. Some knobs and we found the chairs spin around. So when we're all hanging out in here, got the beds out, got chairs for host way since he's gonna live in the garage. <laughs> but check this out. So here, walk back here. We got the dang car. Look at that. Check out how quiet this generator is. We're gonna install a plug, like an RV plug, so we can do all this while we're at home without having the generator running, but this thing is quiet. It is super quiet. Literally, the ACs are the loudest part. It's a slide out, out. Reagan. So before we go drive this thing, we want to kind of do just a light systems check and better familiarize ourselves with the bus. However, unfortunately, as I was lowering the lift gate down to get to the engine compartment, the winch got stuck yet again. Same problem we had before. So I had to get creative and fix it. I had to use a pole jack and it was kind of a mess, but we did figure out the, the root cause of the problem and hopefully we shouldn't have that problem again. So now that we've got everything down, we wanted to start going through the engine compartment. We looked at this when we bought the bus but you know we've still got a lot to learn about these buses and these Cummins engines we're still trying to determine for sure which engine is in this bus so if we need to order parts we can so we're just trying to learn this is a uh, education mission of figuring out the odds and ends of this bus all right well we've just been going through everything trying to kind of really familiarize ourselves with all the different systems and the wiring and the cooling so the shower has a leak and we found those hoses here, you can see there where they're capped off. So at least we know how to hook those, tie those back in once we fix the shower leak itself, which we need to do. Uh, it does say there's hot water, but I don't really know where the hot water heater is. But yeah, just going through, looking through everything. This is a switch box so that when we plug it into shore power, it auto switches. Verify that, check the oil in the generator. We want to do a change on that and everything else, but again, just going through, familiarizing ourselves with all the different systems where everything is. We definitely don't want to figure all this out on the road, you know? So, yeah, we're gonna fire it up, take a good listen to the engine with this all opened up. Then we need to uh, strap the vet down. I went ahead and unplugged this extra fridge. We do still want to test install the tires. We might do that, do it with just bare tires so we're not carrying around heavy wheels. But familiarizing ourselves, right, Osway? Mm, got this cleaned up. I think Josue is the most about the bus. I, mean, so I don't know how Raldo feels about it. Somebody's got to be about it. As <laughs> far as like getting in there and uh, 
handling the dirty work. Yeah, but just like into it in general. Oh, no, absolutely. It's just. Oswey likes this thing. I like cool. it. I like it. It's just scary. As I said, it's scary. I mean, there's a lot of systems. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And we thought about this. We talked. Did we not talk about it? Yes. Yep. Since everyone thinks I'm looking at it through rose-colored glasses, it. we debated a lot. But uh, again, childhood dream, cost-wise, it makes sense. You know. We're gonna try. We're gonna try it. That's all there is to it. That's all we can do. <laughs> And if it works out well, then we'll have a sweet tour bus that we just, we can go cruise, crunt, you know, we can cry, we could go on a two month, three month cross country drift trip if we wanted to and live in the RV, stay at RV parks and have the car, pull it out at the RV park, work on it if we need to. Like that's been a long term dream of mine, right? To go on like a drift road trip, go to multiple states. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. It's scary, but pretty much all big, risk steps in life are scary and it's scary so anyway i'm gonna quit jibber jab and we're gonna fire this thing up i haven't fired it up since we parked it here i don't think uh we fired the generator up a couple times but i haven't fired the bus up so hopefully this goes well Got both ACs on, so the generator's working. Can hardly hear it. You just hear this side piece rattling. Yeah, you walk around here and got all the compartments open besides that one because the door's in the way. to go ahead and get this winch situation fixed for once and for all we had determined the problem was that the roller was a little too short there was supposed to be a washer there and that washer had broken so we basically needed to replace that it just kept falling into the gap between the roller and the frame so we went ahead and got that knocked out and got ready to strap the vet down all right take a trip up here with me all right we just threw a front and a rear strap on plus the winch you know we're not going to go very far Hopefully you have them oh, you're right. Soon. We're going to be changing this instead of using the four hook points. We're going to use what we did in the other trailer, which is the e track strap. So the tire will be on the e track, the strap goes over the tire and straps down. It is so much better. The car does not move, it doesn't come loose. It's so much easier on the car. You're not strapping to the subframe, the suspension. But you can see how much room we have back here. Also, when we do the e track straps, the straps will be flat here instead of, you know, crisscrossing like this. Um, so we could easily, I think, fit the, the scoop back here. It's going to be kind of crammed against the vet, but the vet can also go forward a, a, probably a foot or two, foot or so. So we got more room than I thought we did. That's for sure. Pretty wild to see this thing in here. But it's in there. In there like swimwear. It's a tight squeeze, but it's in there. So now that the vet was all strapped down, we could close this thing up again once and for all before we take this thing on a drive. It goes back to that order of operations thing. We didn't think to strap it while we were in there. We probably could have done it with the doors closed, but it was easier to pop them open while we had the gate down anyway. So we went ahead and tried to rewind the winch a little bit better. The problem is it's pulling on the far side of the lift gate. So it just wants to work itself all the way to one side and wind up only on that side. So that's still an issue we need to address. Uh, but for now, we've got it working to where it shouldn't get caught and get stuck on us again because that was really annoying to deal with. All right, this is pretty dang exciting. So 
we're trying to plan for all the contingencies. Anything that could happen, you know, while we're at the track. And that is one of the downsides to the lift gate is like, if it, if for whatever reason you can't use it, you can't get the car in. So I was thinking about how we need to bring a plug and adapter so that if we had to borrow someone's generator to run, because I assumed it runs on the generator, but it doesn't. Look at this. It runs on the bus batteries, because I noticed the winch runs on the bus batteries, or like the 12 volt system. So that is super exciting. You know, obviously we need to have the generator on so it's recharging those batteries, but if worse for whatever reason we didn't have the generator, we could at least still uh, ideally get the car in. So that's really, that makes me feel good. That's very well thought out. All right, I'm gonna close this up. I know we've opened and closed it like 456 times, mm -hmm. but. Wrong side, partner. Oh yeah, you're right. But basically scoots that one, so that one. This one, yeah. it's not super tight. All right, close back up, mm -hmm. makes sense. The goal is, now that the car is strapped down, I like to take it for a little drive tomorrow. Uh, it'll be good to see how it goes getting out of my driveway here. Just swing a little wide here. This is gravel, so that's why I'm not too worried about it being parked here. This is hard packed, but once we get off this, it's not so hard packed. So, you know, we gotta move quick once we get off it. We have the angle, but we gotta try to avoid the sprinklers. Basically figure out what it's like to pull out of here. Kind of digging in on the back right and then I mean the bush it just came real close and just kind of moved it a little bit a lot of it but not really you didn't hit the actual stump but it was tight we out <laughs> The bus takes the scenic route. Right? No, it's sick. It was so weird. Jose said it felt weird. He went and drove his truck after <laughs> we got back. Yo. And for me, even like two days later, I took the BMW to go to the store, and I was like, like I feel like I can't see. interesting how everything's on a lot like everything's latched down or tied down I mean obviously it makes sense but Yeah, that's pretty much. 
much it. It's like, how are they going to tell you not to be down here? Touching the feelers, you can come in some more. Yep, yep, you're good. A foot, you're good. You're past it. Exercise one really feels no different power wise of the car in it. I feel like I noticed the weight on the top when we go through bumps, maybe, but I could be wrong about that. It could be my imagination. Thing two, surprisingly maneuverable. I mean, my original plan was to back this thing in, and the only reason we ended up with it here 
was just we got back late and we didn't want to deal with trying to figure out how to back it in at six o'clock in the morning. So we just like swan dove in, backed up and then pulled in here, but that was a good test. It backed in, no problem. But still have to shift it over like we did, but um, yeah, that's good because ultimately we want to put it back where my enclosed trailer was on that side, build a RV carport. But we're gonna have to gravel that in because I don't know if you can see on camera, but just having to swing wide to get in here, we dug in good. So in theory, the ideal scenario is park it there, we pull up here, load up and then roll out we might have to get rid of that palmetto thing all right because that thing's just some of those bushes that are in the way but it made it in and out you know so that's exciting we were worried about that, that was one of our biggest concerns when thinking about buying this thing was are we going to be able to fit it are we going to be able to even get it in to the property so uh yeah all right we're going to load the car now Now it's time for the next trial run of unloading the car. Now we haven't done this before either, but if it went in, it should come out. But just like loading the car in, we still got a lot to learn and we'll get quicker and quicker with it once we have the kind of order of operations down packed. Now, the biggest struggle, just like on the way in, is the doors. That is our narrowest point. And the, the difficulty is my other trailer was actually a touch narrower by half an inch, but that was only at the wheels. Now, this narrow spot that we have on the doors is the whole car, more or less. So we're running into the problem where the rear over fenders are our widest point and they are very, very tight coming out. We actually had to shave down this bolt that was just kind of trying to dig into them but once we did that it came out nice it's really pretty easy to unload because you just let it roll out nice and smooth with the winch it feels safe controlled you're not stressing it get it back to the chocks drop it down put the ramps on and we're done and dusted car is out of the bus So with the car unloaded, it's just time to close everything back up. This part we have done quite a few times, so we're getting more familiar with it. The ramp, when you slide it in, it, it gets tight. Something we need to address. We're gonna have to sort that out to make it a little easier. But for the time being, we've basically gotta tilt the lift gate up and use gravity to pull it in, and then we can get our pin in. So it's not the best method, but it's really not that bad. Everything pins in nicely. And we're really getting the order of operations on this part down. There's a bunch of steps, but once you get through it, it's really not that bad and the back of the bus closes up like nothing ever happened like a car wasn't even in there all right well we got this thing unloaded did great with the car in it uh, really happy with that kind of went through some tests the air compressor on the engine seems to be working really well it builds pressure quick we need to go through more of the maintenance stuff inspect everything but so far so good um, again that drive was really nice felt good to get this thing out on the open road again i've got lights coming for the back got some big leds that'll be really cool we're gonna be able to light up the whole pits with this thing lights for the interior different e-track for strapping the car down we've got plenty of upgrades to do this thing but for now Got a good test in, answered some unanswered questions. And uh, yeah, so ideally I wanna wrap this thing matte black to match the vet with a little bit of delivery. Probably not as extreme, but some of it. That would be my ideal end game. But for now, we just wanna get the bugs worked out, get used to it, use it, put it through its paces, make sure it's good and solid before we go worrying about the, the aesthetics too much. So that being said, that is gonna be a wrap for this episode. I'm gonna end it here. But let me know what you guys think of the bus, the bus projects, anything you would like to see, TV. Gotta go, gotta order TV. We got plenty to do, plenty to keep us busy. But for now, we're out of time. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I sure hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.